you know, Amnita muscaria is still being used today, right? In Siberia, this is, this is a psychoactive mushroom that is used by people. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the criticisms we make in our book of Wasson related to uh, his reluctance to move into Christianity and the devastating impact his work had on when he revealed Maria Sabina, the Mazatec shaman who invited him in the 1950s to be the first white outsiders to participate in her uh, psilocybin mushroom uh, velabas, all night ceremonies. And he promised that he would not show those photographs. And she told him that it would be una traición, you know, it would be a, it'd be a betrayal if you did. And he did it in Life magazine, which is, you know, pick a popular magazine today. <laughs> and that was life in those days when there were very few, you know, there were not so many uh, fragments in the media world. So it devastated her life. It devastated the, the Mazatec community. Uh, they were inundated with mushroom seekers from Europe and the United States. We critique Wasson for that. That in no way takes away from the incredible work he did on Soma, uh, on documenting Mesoamerican shamanism, on working with Albert Hoffman and Carl Rook to unveil the Kikian potion of the Eleusinian mysteries as a psychoactive drug, and also to document the history of the use from time immemorial until now in the present day of the Siberian reindeer herders. Uh, these are nomadic people. There's about 300,000 of them in about 30 different ling linguistic groups spread out all the way from the Nenets and from the Finnish border of Russia, all the way through central Russia and all the way uh, into uh, eastern Russia, bordering the Bering Straits, uh, Kamachkal Peninsula. Uh, and they take Amanita muscaria mushroom today as part of reindeer herder shamanism. And they're known as the, for various reasons, the fathers of, of shamanism. So this was all important work that Wasson did, including tracing the linguistic roots of the word mushroom, madness, mushroom madness, fly agaric, be mushroomed uh, into the different Siberian uh, reindeer herder languages. Visited the reindeer herders uh, today, uh, and there's you know quite a revival of interest uh, in their culture. And I'm, I'm delighted to mention that two uh, Russian mycologists who are very familiar with Amanita muscaria are translating and publishing our book in Russian, uh, and it'll come out in Russian sometimes in the spring, along with Gordon Wasson and his wife, Valentina uh, Wasson's uh, first book on Russia, Mushroom, Mushroom Russia and History, which was the, the catalyst where they defined there's certain cultures that love mushrooms, like the Slavic cultures, and those are the my mycophilic cultures. And there's certain cultures like the Germanic, Anglo, English speaking ones that are afraid of mushrooms and toadstools in the fungal world, the microphilic cultures. So this was all wrapped up in, uh, in Wasson's work. And the reindeer herders are a very prominent group of current indigenous people who use psychoactive substances in their shamanistic rituals to explore the upper world and the and the lower worlds. And I think it's worth mentioning that the um, sort of <clears throat> Amnes muscaria, also known as fly agaric, is this probably the most iconic mushroom in the world, right? You know, we see it in in fairy tales and this this red mushroom with white dots. And so that that yes. kind of it's fortunate, I guess, in the work that you've you've been doing trying to identify these things in art. It's kind of um, we're not talking about an ambiguous mushroom here. We're talking about something very distinct. No. No, it's, it is probably the most uh, iconic and prominent mushroom uh, in the world. It's uh, got that, when it's mature, that red cap with the white dots. Uh, people have seen it in um, Scandinavian folk tales, in fairy uh, stories. Uh, it even makes an appearance in Walt Disney's Fantasia. 
And as my students are, are fond of telling me, it pops up in the Mario Brothers video games where, you know, they, they get this mushroom and it gives them uh, power. So it's, it's very iconic and uh, its image is all over uh, the internet, internet. It is one of the two varieties of psychoactive mushrooms that we found in the Christian artwork. And by that I mean in frescoes, in ceiling paintings, in mosaics, in sculpture, in illuminated Bibles and manuscripts uh, throughout uh, Europe and uh, the Middle East. The other variety we found were varieties of psilocybin mushrooms, and there are about 100 varieties of, of psilocybin mushrooms uh, throughout the world, certainly in the United States and Europe, and thanks to uh, Terence and Dennis McKenna, uh, who put out a manual on how to grow psilocybin mushrooms, they've, they've spread uh, very widely uh, around the world. One of the unique aspects of Amanita muscaria is that the ebotenic acid and the muscimol, which are the psychoactive agents in it, do not metabolize well in the body. In other words, they're passed out through the urine. And one of the enigmas of Soma and of the Hindu Rig Veda was they talk about Indra, one of the gods coming, you know, to, to piss out Soma, uh, pissing it out like a stag day and night. You have assumed your most mighty force. And Wasson, to his credit, did not simply put together footnotes and bibliography because he spent over a decade collecting manuscripts from around the world and having them translated. Soldiers of fortune, prisoners of war, Soviet uh, you know, prisoners, um, missionaries who had been to Siberia and seen the reindeer herders. And some of them described the shaman you know, climbing up the tree in his delirious state of Amanita muscaria, coming down, emerging from his yurt, and people holding out their cups so he can urinate into it. And they drink it. And they have a psychedelic experience. So we say, yuck, that's disgusting. <laughs> uh, but this is cultural relativism. You know, different cultures have different ways of looking at things and doing things. And I think, um, and the reindeer herders uh, also carry um, urine, you know, laced with amanita in, in uh, deerskin bags so they can attract the herds back to them when they need to. And the deer go crazy over urine, all right? So I think this is one of the most compelling things that Wasson discovered because it sort of gives a biochemical basis for understanding this. And there's no other, I mean, mescaline and, and peyote, uh, psilocybin, DMT, they don't have that kind of effect. You know, they're metabolized. 